The original Xbox is often touted as the most powerful 6th generation console, known for its superior multi-platform releases. While we won't be examining those claims today, I'd like to provide an overview of how original Xbox analog video functions and looks like with different AV cables. While researching for this video, I learned quite a few things and I think some of those are not common knowledge. So hopefully there is something interesting for you too. With that being said, let's start the video. Spend enough hours in front of the screen and you're bound to start seeing stuff. There are a few quirks and interesting tidbits to discuss when it comes to optimizing the image output of your Xbox. However, before we dive into that, it's important to note that this video won't be covering HDMI adapters or HDMI mods. Still, it is worth mentioning that most HDMI adapters convert Xbox's component output to a digital signal. And I say most because there have been instances where these adapters appear to use composite output instead. Unlike the GameCube for example, the Xbox does not have a hidden digital output in its AV port. For true digital output on the original Xbox, you'll need a proper mod that requires soldering and taps into the console's digital signal. But in this video, we won't be discussing them any further. So, let's start from the beginning. The original Xbox supports composite, S-video, RGB and component video outputs. There is also an official RF adapter, but I wouldn't recommend using it unless you specifically need it for some reason. All region consoles can support all video formats, unlike the GameCube where only PAL consoles support RGB and only NTSC consoles support S-Video. Xbox can support 480i, 480p, 576i, 720p and 1080i resolutions. Despite claims from multiple websites about Xbox supporting 576p, I couldn't find any method to enable this resolution. It may be possible on a hardware level, but as far as I can see, you won't be playing games like that. Either way, this video mode was only used in regions where PAL was the main standard. If you are using an unmodified PAL console, in your dashboard settings the only thing you can enable is PAL 60 mode. This will enable 60Hz mode for games that support that, but this will not enable for you to use progressive or high definition video modes. For those, you will either have to have an NTSC console, which was sold in US or Japan for example, or you'll have to mod your European PAL console to use NTSC video modes. It's important to note that there are two distinct NTSC modes on the Xbox, NTSC-M and NTSC-J. These modes operate differently, so it's important to be aware of their distinctions. If you live in a region where PAL consoles were prevalent and encounter issues with black levels when switching to NTSC video mode, where black color appears closer to grey, consider switching to NTSC-J instead. NTSC-J uses zero IRE units for black color, same as PAL, whereas NTSC-M uses 7.5 IRE units for its black color. This difference means that black starts further down the scale, which can result in incorrect black levels on PAL or zero IRE calibrated equipment. Yeah, the world's waiting for you! For this video, I will be using my console switch to NTSC with 480p video mode enabled. I won't be using widescreen, but the Xbox has many games that support that and some even support 720p and 1080i image output. We will be comparing three different video encoders that are used in Xbox consoles. Namely, Conexant, used in Xbox Revision 1.0 till 1.3, Focus, used in 1.4 revision, and Excalibur, used in 1.6 revision. To find out which of these encoders you have, if you are running a modded console, you can simply open XBMC and check your system info. If you are not using a modded console, I will leave a link in the video description to help you identify your console revision. There has been, mostly anecdotal, evidence suggesting that some revisions have better video output than 
than others. Based on my own testing, there is small grain of truth to this claim, but I believe some of the assumptions are somewhat untrue, based on what I've observed. At this point in this video, it's important to watch it in full screen and at the highest available quality. Although the games we're testing today only run at 480p, online video platforms use video compression. Viewing this video at a higher resolution will help to mitigate this, making the image look closer to what you would see on your own screen from your own console. All of this footage has been captured using a RetroTing 5X, with the same settings applied for all cables where applicable. Let's start with composite. For this capture I used cables that came bundled with original Xbox. From what I'm seeing here the difference is negligible, if not non-existent. If I had to confidently award the winner here I wouldn't, instead I'd say it's a three-way tie, but what do you think? Brief Miss Croft. I have many demands on my time, you understand? Of course, Takamoto-san. I am looking for a piece, a sword fragment, in the care of Waseda University, or it was until you stole it. <laughs> I am not a thief. And you would be wise to avoid such accusations. Then I suggest we skip to the negotiations. I don't have any idea what you are talking about. Next in our list is S-Video. For capturing S-Video, I used my own DIY made cables. And I utilized RetroTing's ability to get S-Video from RCA connectors. S-Video definitely looks better than composite. And if you have equipment that's compatible with it, I think it's a worthwhile upgrade. Now that we are looking at S-Video capture, I have a feeling that Konexant encoder is slightly blurrier than others. Still, I feel the difference is not big enough to specifically look out for other revisions if you have this one. Now it's time to look at RGB's cart. For capturing RGB's cart, I used the cable from Retro Gaming Cables. While testing, I noticed that one of the encoders acts a little bit different, specifically when using RGB's cart outputs. The Konexant and Excalibur encoders don't seem to differentiate between NTSCM and NTSCJ black levels. They both use zero IRE. Meanwhile, the focus encoder adjusts according to the video mode set following the respective black level, which in practice probably changes very little since RGB's cart would be mostly used in PAL regions, but it's an interesting detail nevertheless. RGB's cart is probably the best 480i signal you can get in a PAL region. That is, if you specifically want NTSC 60Hz output. This is because component cable will use 7.5 IRE in both NTSC-M and NTSC-J video modes and will only use 0 IRE if set to PAL. I believe this to be the reason why many people say that 480i looks washed out on original Xbox. But getting back to the video quality, I feel that just like in S-Video comparison, Konexant encoder produces a slightly blurrier image. Last but not least is the component cable. For this I used HD RetroVision's V cable together with Xbox TV Component Pro adapter. Unlike the PlayStation 2 which can output a progressive scan video signal through an RGB cable, the Xbox is limited to achieving this with only a component cable. And as is expected, this is the best image so far. But as is not expected, popular internet belief that Excalibur video encoder produces slightly less sharp image output with component seems to be somewhat true. Though when someone calls it bad, I'd call it a huge over-exaggeration. From all these comparisons, I think I can safely say that whichever console you have will not make or break your experience. The slight differences are more of a curiosity than a significant detractor. But what will make a difference is the quality of your cables. 
Originally, I had an RGB SCART cable bought from AliExpress. Soon I discovered it's all kinds of bad and I will show how that looked like. I don't believe I even need a side-by-side -side comparison here. Now I'll leave you with comparison between composite, SVDO, RGB and component captures. Bye until the next video. Sharpen your flags! It's not the end!